Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Recently, you may have noticed that there have been a lot of videos on Nano Banana and Photoshop. Also, you may have noticed that none of those videos have been from me. There's two reasons for that. The first reason is I'm really not into it. I really don't care for using AI in post-production in this manner. At the end of this video, I'll go into more detail about that. The second reason why I haven't done any videos on Nano Banana and Photoshop is because that it was, until recently, only available as a paid plugin. So you had to purchase a plugin and install it. And the installation process wasn't trivial. You had to get an API key, you had to load the API key. So it was an entire process that I wasn't really interested in doing. Also, to use it, you had to purchase credits from Google. Well, now, Nano Banana is built into the beta version of Photoshop. It's not a plugin that you have to install, and you don't have to purchase any credits from Google. It just uses your normal Creative Cloud credits. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to use it. Now, as I mentioned, it's in the current beta version of Photoshop. If you have a Creative Cloud subscription, you could download the beta version of Photoshop. To do that, open up the Creative Cloud app, and on the left-hand side, click on Apps. Then at the top, click on Beta. And then right here, you could download it. And the beta version of Photoshop could run side-by-side -side on your computer with the current version of Photoshop. Now, to use Nano Banana in Photoshop, it's just like using Generative Fill. As a matter of fact, it's part of Generative Fill. To use Generative Fill in Photoshop, you need to make a selection first. So, let's just say on this specific image, I want her eyes open. So I need to make a selection of her eyes. I'm going to use the Selection Brush tool to do that. The Selection Brush tool is here with the Lasso tools right at the top. And it's just a brush. I'm just going to paint right over her eyes. As simple as that. Once I do that, on the contextual taskbar, you'll have Generative Fill. Click on that. Now, by default, it's going to use Adobe's uh, like engine to do this. That's Firefly. We want to use Nano Banana. To use Nano Banana, Banana, click on the little FI right here. And you'll notice that we have Firefly Image 3. That's the current version of Firefly. Firefly Image 1, which was a previous version. And then we have actually two partner models. One is Clux Context Pro. And I'll cover that in this video as well. I don't think it works as well in most situations as Gemini 2.5, which is Nano Banana. And that's the one we're going to use. So just click on that. Then we're going to tell it what we want. We're going to write open her eyes. All right, that's it. And then we're going to click on generate. So it's actually going to use Nano Banana to do this. Now, unlike Firefly, it will only give us one variation. If you've ever used Generative Fill in Photoshop previously, you know that it gives us three variations. Those are three Firefly variations. In this case, it gives us this single variation. Now, if you don't like it, you could come up here and click Generate again. It will give you a second variation. Of course, it's going to use more of your uh, Creative Cloud credits to do that. If you want to try a different model, go over here where we now have the G for Google. Click on that. And let's say we want to try this Flux Context Pro. Click on that and click Generate. Now it will use Flux Context Pro, which I think is part of Black Forest Labs, uh, another just you know, partner they have doing this. And you could see what this does. And again, it will only give us one variation of this. You can see this one's taking a little longer. And that one looks pretty good. So there's Flux Context Pro. And there is the um, Nano Banana or Google version of the image. I kind of like the Flux one a little better. Um, playing with this, I found that Flux for simple things like this often works very well. But the blending is it is good when you're doing larger things, and maybe we'll run into that in this video. As you know, it's kind of hit and miss. Sometimes when you try to do a generative fill, it will be perfect. Then you're doing it a second time on the same exact image with the same exact selection with the same exact prompt, and it fails miserably. Well, Clux Context Pro and Nano Banana are no different. Often they work perfectly, but then sometimes they fail miserably, and it's just kind of hit and miss. Now let's just, for the sake of completeness, compare this to what we would have got from regular old Adobe's Photoshop Firefly. So what we'll do is we'll go here, click on this, and we'll go to Firefly Image 3. 
keeping the same exact prompt and we'll click generate. Now, because we're using Firefly, it's giving us three variations of this. Now it doesn't like overwrite and you won't lose the other two that we got the one from Clux Context Pro or the one from Nano Banana. Those are still there. But you could see how that is horrible. That, she looks kind of funny. And that is horrible. But if we scroll down, there's the original Nano Banana. And here's the one from Clux Context Pro. So you can see those worked out better. Much better than the Firefly versions. Now let's do something a little more complex. And let's um, maybe talk about how it can fail. Uh, for example, let's just say I want these two people in this scene to be facing the camera. And you may be tempted to just go up to the contextual taskbar and click on select subject. And what it will do is it will get a selection of them. And it's a pretty precise selection. Then we'll click on generative fill. And then we'll go over here and we'll make sure we're using nano banana. And we're going to type in the prompt is have them face and look at the camera, all right? That's gonna be our prompt and we'll click generate. Now again, this is hit and miss, but when I tried this in practice, it cut off part of the man's face. And I actually did it twice. And one time it cut off about half of his face. And then the second time it cut off maybe a quarter of his face. Uh, so you could see here it cut off part of his face. So you could see that 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 didn't work out at well, uh, well at all. Now, I actually wanted them turned and face the camera, so I kind of screwed that up. So to make this work, let's undo this totally. Just hit uh, Command-Z on my Mac a few times, or Command-Z, it's Control-Z on a PC. So we're right back kind of where we started. Now, to make it work properly is you need to get a selection of them, but it's a loose selection. So again, we'll use the Selection Brush tool. I'll get a larger brush, and you're just going to go like this. So don't try to get exact selections. Often, the exact selections won't work as well. So get a complete selection of them like that. Then we're going to again go to Gender Fill. We're going to again go use Nano Banana. And then I want them to actually turn. Oops, if I could spell right. Have them turn and face the camera. All right, so we'll try that and we'll generate and we'll have them turn and face the camera in this way. Every time I tried it, it worked perfectly, but again, it's hit and miss. Don't know what we're going to get, but let's see. And once it does it, again, it just gives you the one variation here, this a little better. Now, one thing about blending, you can see the blending here is pretty bad. You can see that up above, it's kind of all like very hard edge. By default, when you use the Selection Brush tool, it's going to have a hard edge. So what you need to do, I'll undo this again by hitting Command-Z, is you need to go up to the brush, and at the top right here for the brush itself, you want to take hardness all the way down. With hardness all the way down, then do your selection. Like this. So it's a softer brush, and this will help it blend better. No, you notice too, when other people were doing the, you know, demos on Nano Banana, it always worked perfectly every single time. And I found a lot of times it didn't. It's because they weren't telling you these little tricks you need to do to make it work better. So once we have our selection, click on Generative Fill. Again, we're going to use Nano Banana. And I'm going to write, um, have, gosh darn, I can't type. Have them turn and face the the camera. All right, just like that. We'll click generate. Now this should work a lot better. Also, uh, from what I understand uh, right now, this is going to be relatively low resolution, only like a thousand pixel resolution. So it's not going to, if you have a really high resolution image that you're doing something to, it might not look right. Now you can see how this one blended much better. They are facing the camera. And if I zoom in by hitting command plus on my Mac, control plus on a PC, and I kind of move around a little bit. You can see it blended pretty good. So it's a lot better. So make sure that when you do this, that you use a, a soft brush. And this will make it look a little more effective, better. Now you may be wondering, well, how how is this with 
one of the other models. So let's try this Flux Context Pro and we'll click generate. And again, it doesn't show our selection, but it knows what to do. It's using the selection. And in practice, I tried this with Flux Context Pro and it didn't blend as well at all and it didn't look right. But again, it's hit and miss. It may work better for all, you know, this time around. You don't know. But we'll go and you can see now they are facing the camera and it does look pretty good. Now, supposedly from what I've been reading, the Flux Context Pro is a higher resolution than Nano Banana. So if you could get away with using Flux Context Pro, you may want to use that instead because it will give you a higher resolution like replacement in the middle there so that it will look better. Again, we'll hit Command Plus a couple times and kind of zoom around. And it doesn't, I don't know, it looks kind of low resolution to me. It doesn't, their faces look funny. And if I go back to the Nano Banana version, their faces look more natural, as you can see. Now, just in order to be complete, let's go up here and let's use the current Firefly model and click Generate, and we'll see what this does. And I suspect this will probably fail uh, pretty bad. Uh, because I haven't tried this actually in practice, but um, I'm just got a feeling. Yeah, it replaced the people totally. So obviously, nowhere near as good as the other versions. There's the Clux Context Pro, and here is the Nano Banana version. Now this one, I only did this one. I only did once, and it worked so beautifully. I I just couldn't believe how good it was. But again, who knows what's going to happen here. So I'm going to just get a softer brush again and select the woman totally like this. All right, so we have a selection. Now we're going to click generative fill. We're going to click here and make sure we're using nano banana. And I'm just going to type have her face the camera. All right. And then we're going to click generate. And I only did this once and it hit her turn totally towards the camera and it looked like perfect. Uh, but who knows what we'll get, you know, when you do these things. And that's part of the reason why I don't care for this AI, but you can see it looks pretty good there. Not bad. Um, Overall, it kind of bent the window a little bit here. You can see that bend in the window. Uh, sometimes you always look at fingers. If you're ever doing um, any type of AI thing and a person's hand is getting generated, you always want to look at their hand and make sure they have all their fingers or not an extra finger or maybe a distorted finger or something like that. So again, let's try it with the uh, Flux Context Pro. I think I said Clux before because that's what I actually wrote on my notes for some reason. But we'll uh, do that one, and we'll see what that one looks like. And I tried this in practice, and it, it didn't blend well at all. It was really messed up, and her face looked funny. And let that do its thing. This takes a little longer, as you can see. And um, that one actually doesn't look too bad this time. Um, She's got some more blemishes on her face that probably aren't there in real life. But overall, in the background, looks funky right in here. And again, it's going to fail miserably. But let's try this with Firefly, the current version of Firefly, and click Generate. And this is going to give us three variations. And it's probably going to replace her with an entirely different person. Yes, it did. All right. So there's uh, one variation. There's a second variation, third variation. Here's the Flux Context Pro version. And then here is the Nano Banana version. I like that one the best, I think, of all of them. I think that one looks pretty good. It's still kind of messed up the background a little bit, but it looks pretty decent. So that's Nano Banana built into the current beta version of Photoshop. And I mentioned that at the end of the video, I'd mention why I don't care for these things. Um, if you put photography on a scale and on one side of the scale, you have documentary photography. And then at the other side of the scale, you have like creative photography, like, you know, dreamscape type photography. I personally will lend more towards the documentary side. I like things to be more realistic. 
it's just my personal taste. I'm not saying that anyone who likes this type of thing or any type of dreamscape photography, anything that is surreal, I'm not saying that they're wrong for it. I'm just saying it's not something I care for. So because I care for more realism, naturally, I wouldn't care for something like this. But if you are someone who is really into like dreamscapes or into doing things, making situations that aren't really there, um, this is just the tip of the iceberg. This is only going to get better and it's going to get better exponentially. So I think in another year or two, it's going to be like flawless and it's going to be at a much higher resolution at what cost. I don't know, but if you're really into that, you should be very excited because I think you'll be able to do things like, you know, that photo of Salvador Dali, like water flying and cats flying through the air. Uh, you know, a photography actually did that scene and they had cats flying through the air and terrorize some cats. Well, now you could do it without terrorizing any felines. You could just have it, you know, have someone's image and then have that scene created for you using AI. And I think it's going to be very high quality very soon. So with that said, that's uh, my take on AI, this type of AI used in post-production. And again, in the description of this video, I'll have a link to my current newsletter, uh, the current issue of my newsletter. Uh, in there, I write about AI and photography and some of the things we should be worried about and some of the things we should be excited about, too, for that matter. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. Talk to you guys soon.